What's up, social media? My name is Dre Williams. Today I'm here to talk about a little issue I've been having with my laptop. See, I've had it for about four years now, and it's been great the first two years, honestly. It's been one of the best machines I've had, but in the last two, maybe one and a half years, I've noticed its performance has just dwindled. As a computer science major, this tends to be a pretty big issue if you're intensively using your laptop for things like coding, watching videos, and just general purpose, general use. So with that all said, let's get into it. All of the items I'm about to show, excluding the laptop, were ordered online. Two of them were from Newegg, and three of them were from Amazon. I'll have links in the description to all of the products if you guys want to check them out. And just as a little disclaimer before the upgrade starts, this isn't meant to be a tutorial. I know many of those already exist and have helpful step-by-step -step looks. I just wanted to showcase that I took this project on and can hopefully inspire others to breathe life back into their aging Macs. Feel free to hit me up for anything about this process. These are the crucial DDR3L 1600 unbuffered memory for Mac. Both modules hold 8GB and they have a cast latency of 11. This is the Mushkin Enhanced Reactor 500GB drive. It is an SSD in the 2.5 inch form factor and it uses a SATA 3 interface. This is the Proster 2.5 inch SATA hard drive caddy. It comes with a mini screwdriver and it fits in unibody Mac models like mine. And this is a red case. I am about to pick up a Torx T6 screwdriver because the smallest size that I apparently have is Torx T10, so off to Home Depot it is. If I didn't say this before, my laptop is a mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro non-retina. I got it with a 500GB hard drive and 4 gigs of RAM, and it has a DVD drive in the optical bay. Before you do anything, make sure you disconnect this battery connector that I'm pointing at. As with any work being done on the internals of expensive tech, or just tech in general, try to be as clean, careful, and organized with everything as possible. Make sure the Mac lays on a soft surface. I use a t-shirt, and it should be an anti-static environment. Never screw anything in too tight, and there will be a couple of screws that you have to deal with here and there. Some of them have varying lengths and sizes, so make sure you keep track of which ones you're using and which spot they have to go back to. Now I'll shut up and let the process play for a little bit. At this point, I slipped my hard drive into the second caddy I bought and screwed each of the four corners in to make sure it was secure. Then I'm going to put it into the optical bay. And now comes the process of putting everything back. Remember not to force anything back into their slots and be sure to put the screws back in their corresponding locations. Everything should fit in the end. At this point, what we've done is taken the optical drive of the optical bay, put a hard drive into a second caddy and put that into the optical bay, and an SSD has been taken to put into where the hard drive used to be to help with faster boot up speeds and general optimization with the computer. What I'm going to do now is take my 16 gigabytes that I bought and replace the 4 gigabytes of RAM that was in my MacBook and hopefully have a good upgrade out of this. Let's continue. The process of changing out the RAM is actually really easy and only involves pressing out two tabs and pulling out the old RAM. Installing the new ones is simply sliding them in and pressing down until it clicks. Even though Apple says otherwise, I was able to get 16 gigabytes of RAM into my Mac. <laughs> 
After putting in the RAM, I reconnected my battery and booted up my laptop just like normal. I then reformatted the SSD to be Mac OS Extended Journaled. And the final touches would be putting on the red wine case. We all knew that it would eventually have its time to shine. This process ended up working for me right away because I had the hard drive in the optical bay and the computer recognized that and automatically booted from it. If you have your SSD in here by yourself, you have to pre-install some sort of cloned version of your computer or maybe use some sort of external way of doing that before you put the SSD in as your main boot up drive. After I ended up erasing and formatting the SSD, what I did was start up the computer in recovery mode plugged in my external 3TB drive which carries a clone of my computer and then used the computer to migrate that drive to the SSD and the SSD basically became a cloned copy of what my hard drive was before this whole transfer. Delete everything off the hard drive and now I can use that as some sort of external storage so it's perfect. I guess it's external but internal. So. When you do reformat your SSD, you'll notice that it's actually not going to be encrypted, so I do recommend that when everything's said and done, you re-encrypt your drive. Because nowadays, securities are often really important measures to take, and people usually aren't taking them on your computer, so make sure you do encrypt your hard drive. In terms of my initial results with the computer, I noticed that it is buttery fast, it boots up instantly. It doesn't really lag on programs, I don't get the loading screens anymore, and the boost in performance has absolutely shocked me, so I highly recommend this to anybody who's considering this project. Thanks for tuning in to the video of a complete upgrade on my mid-2012 MacBook Pro 13-inch non-retina. If you have any questions regarding the process of me upgrading my laptop, please feel free to leave them in the comments, show the video some love, and as for now, this has been Dre Williams. I'll catch you guys later. And remember, breathe manually.